Airbnb dogs from Amarillo are heading to El Paso to comfort re first responders. News Channel 10 met them at the airport before they took off. Take a look. Loading say are going with a crisis management team to help first responders that have seen some horrific things. They go to help first responders that, um, whether it's police, fire, or EMS, cope have a coping mechanism. When we do the debriefings, they're there to uh, help calm and uh, kind of help the first responders. We were contacted by the um, Borderland 100 Club, which is a nonprofit organization that is in the El Paso area, and they support first responders and their needs um, when they need it the most. So, of course, after the events on August 3rd, they called us and reached out and asked if we could come out and um, support their debriefing efforts. Hopefully these first responders open up, um, maybe when they normally wouldn't, uh, because, of course, you know, they feel like, oh, this is their job, they shouldn't have feelings about this, but there are feelings when it comes to the things that these first responders see, and sometimes the dog can help uh, these individuals release some of these emotions that normally they would keep bottled up. As a first responder, our whole job every single day is to help other people. This time we get to help our own. We get to help our own police, fire, EMS, and first responders. It's one of those uh, mixed emotion type of things. You know, of course, you're so um, grateful that you can be there for these people, but it's obviously it comes from something that um, very negative, something that horrible that happened. Um, but if we can bring just a little bit of light into these people's um, life during this time, it makes it well worth it. And now in case you missed the doggy paddle today at the Southeast Swimming Pool, we have you covered. And let me tell you, I'm very disappointed in myself for not taking my little pup. But here you go, over 50 dogs showed up to beat the heat and swim freely before they drain the pool. Take a look. So we do this event every, every year, sometime in August. We close the pools down, we do it for the dogs so they can cool off for the year. This is the second year the event has been going on. So we, we hosted this for two years and so far it's been doing good. We've known about it for a little bit. It's kind of new to us. Um, so we decided to come bring a booth over. We just got a bunch of fun dogs running out here today. It's the last day that the pool is open. So they're doing the whole um, dogs come in, of course, no people. And then we're going to drain it down for the end of summer. So kind of just like the last hurrah of the end of summer. We reach out to, to every, any you know service department dog wise uh, to come to the event spend some time even the animal shelter right next to us you know we have local people come in and help out with the event so it's it's been great it is definitely a cool experience it's not something that a lot of people get to participate in um, it's a lot of fun just seeing all the different breeds of dogs coming around you know we have anything from super tiny to these large fluffy dogs that come through it really helps kind of get the word out there to Amarillo that we need to be taking care of our pets and that we can provide fun things like this for you to do if you do have dogs. We have two pools southeast southwest. Um, why not just uh, let the dogs have the pool for it? Hundreds of people gathered in Canyon at the square for the third annual Autumn Street Fest. News Channel 10 was there for the pet parade, pumpkin painting, games and much more. Check it out. We're having our third annual Autumn Street Fest today. Um, we have the farmer's market vendors. This is their last farmer's market of the year. Um, and to go along with that, we have pumpkin painting. So we had free pumpkins for the first hundred kids. And then the Boy Scout Troop 4 is here selling additional pumpkins. We, we just have fun. It's, it's a lot of fun for us to see all the kids having fun painting pumpkins. My, my scouts have a blast doing this and it makes us a little bit, we have a little a fundraiser with it. It's, it's good for the troop and get, good to get out in the community. So we just have a fun time. The goal of this event was just to bring people to the square, showcase the farmer's market, showcase um, the businesses that are here in our downtown, um, but also have some fun activities for families. And so the pet parade and pumpkin painting does that. Um, and then Panhandle Paws of Hope and Texas Panhandle Pet Savers, we appreciate them being here. That kind of adds to the pet parade um, and helps us help them too. And we were super excited to be able to partake in this because it's another community event that will help us spread awareness to our rescue animals and to be able to get our dogs adopted. Community events are great for, for families, um, really for everyone. Um, it just helps bring people together. It gives them something to do that everything is free of charge here. And um, it's just uh, a way to bring. Five semi trucks full of meat, dairy and produce were part of a free food giveaway at Hamlet Shopping Center today. 
The giveaway was put on by multiple community partners in an effort to help those dealing with the hardships brought on by COVID-19. The distribution that we've done this year, we brought in five semis, five semis that we brought in. We brought in protein again and produce, and we also brought in dairy this time. We were downtown last time, and this time we're in the north side of Amarillo. As the stimulus package is not, has not been redone for yet, we're going to have more and more people who are going to be in need of the products that we are giving. We know that there's a need here in our area, and we are so excited because Services of Hope chose Amarillo and the Texas Panhandle so that we can help people here. It's well worth it. My mother, once again, my mom and my dad taught us really well about giving back. And you can just see from here, lots of other people got that same training with them. So that's a big thing with it. We've always been about education, and now we're about education and being able to give food out. Oftentimes, you don't have a lot to give yourself, but when you can give back to the community in any way, and this is a great way. Amarillo Community Market has come to an end today. The annual market had various, uh, various hurdles to overcome with COVID-19, but still managed to make it work for vendors and shoppers. And we're so grateful to this city. First, for letting us use the beautiful historic Santa Fe Depot and for letting us be open because so many things had to cancel this summer. And we have had great crowds averaging between 800 and 1,000 people every day. We've averaged about 40 to 45 vendors, and we just know we've offered great vendors to the community. Small businesses like us need markets like this to get our name out and to continue our business growing, as well as just getting involved in the community. Um, we have really enjoyed the community aspect of this market. The community really comes out and supports local uh, small businesses. You know, I would say this season has been even more successful because so many people have really become interested in locally produced food, locally grown food, and there's been a big need for that. We just are appreciative of the market for allowing us to come out continually. The support of the local businesses, small businesses is wonderful. We're very blessed by that and we're just appreciative. It's just the joy that we were still able to fulfill our mission to bring people downtown, keep downtown growing, and the success stories of so many of these, small, uh, these vendors the vendors who have made it into a real business and taken a hobby and now they're full-fledged full, full -fledged entrepreneurs.